Hey, guys, stay tuned as we continue our study of Revelation chapter 19, the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, today here on The Last Things Podcast. don't believe in prophecies i intend i i'm inclined to why because the holy spirit is still here all all a prophecy is is just a word from god god can speak to anybody i think what happens is some a lot of people get 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 caught up on the title of prophet you know that that's one thing that i noticed we kind of get hung up on titles a lot we do we get hung up on titles don't worry. The only title you should be worrying about is servant. That's the only title you should be worried about. Servant, not pastor, not pro, not pastor, not prophet, not bishop, not apostle, not deacon, not reverend, not men. No, the, the only title you should be worried about is servant. That's why I don't walk around calling myself minister, minister, such and such, minister, such and such. I don't do all that. I just say my name, Damien. How you doing? Because the only title I need is servant. Why? Because you can get so focused because we can sometimes our human side, we can get so focused on the title. We then we start wanting people to worship us because of the title that we have. And that will get us in trouble. The only title that so that's why I say we sometimes we get too hung up on titles. The only title you need to be worrying about is servant. That's the only title. Nothing else should matter. Nothing else. OK, so people. So I'm saying that to say people don't believe in prophecy. I do because it's a gift from the spirit. The Holy Spirit is still living. All the prophecy is, is just God speaking to you, telling you to tell a person something else. Anybody can do that because it's not you. It's God telling you. So do I believe in the gift of prophecy? Yes, I do. I do. Because all it is is just a simple word from God. OK, so that's what that scripture means. How does the prophecy of I'm just saying that when it comes to testing the prophetic word, how does it bless God? How does it bless God? OK, and test it with the word of God. See if God moves in that way. See if that's something God will allow, because every prophetic word ha- will bless God in some way, shape, form or fashion. If it does not bless God, you know, that's not a gift. That cannot be a prophetic word. OK, that's that's my opinion i'm not no pastor so you might want to run this by your pastor because they might i could be wrong that's just my opinion of what i think what i believe but you run it past the senior pastor yourself to see what they tell you okay now here we are at verse 11 we are here let's read it then i saw heaven open then i saw heaven open And a white horse was standing there and the one sitting on the right white horse was named faithful and true for he judges fairly and then goes to war. Man, you see that? And he was named faithful and the name, the one on the horse was named faithful and true. Here he is. Here he is. Verse 12. His eyes were fl- were bright, were bright like flames of fire, and on his head were what many crowns. I want to stop right there. Jesus has many crowns on his head, many crowns. Now, for the believers, I talked about this in the earlier episode. The believers, we have there are five different crowns for the believer. Five different crowns, okay? 
I'm going to give you the scriptures and you can go back and read them in your study time. OK, the first crown is the imperishable crown, which is found in first Corinthians chapter nine, verse twenty four through twenty five. The crown of rejoicing is found in first Thessalonians chapter two, verse nineteen. The crown of righteousness is found in second Timothy chapter four, verse eight. Excuse me. The crown of glory is found in first Peter chapter five, verse four. And the crown of life is found in Revelation chapter two, verse 10. Those are the five crowns for a believer that are in scripture. Now, when we get on the other side of glory, there is possible. There, there is very likely to be other crowns that we don't know about. But we know this. Christ has more than five. Why? Because it says he's got many crowns. So that means he's got more than five. OK, but let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. A name was written on him, written on him, and only he knew what it meant. Wow. He's got a name written on him and only he knows what it means. Doesn't that sound like what he told one of the churches? I'm 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 slipping. I can't remember which one it is off the top of my head. Let me see which one is. Is it the Thyra Tyra? No, da, 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 da. no, I don't think it's the tower. Is it Pergamum? Yeah, it is. It's a church in Pergamum. What was one of the rewards he told him? Everyone who is victorious will eat of the manna that has been hidden away in heaven. And I will give to each one a white stone and on the stone will be engraved a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it. Very similar to Christ. He's going to give them a name and only the one and the only one who knows what that name will mean is the one who receives the name. And now here we are in Revelation chapter uh, 19. Jesus has a name and only he knows what it means. There's a name written on him and only he knows, only he knew what it meant. Wow. I want to look at verse 13. Let's go to verse 13. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his title was word of was the word of God. Now. His robe is dipped in blood, right? I want to look at Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah chapter 63. And we're going to go with verse one. <clears throat> who, <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 63, verse one says this. Who is this who comes from Edom from the city of Basra? With his clothing stained red, who is this in royal in royal robes, marching in his great strength? It is I, the Lord, announcing your salvation. It is I, the Lord, who has the power to save. Verse two. Why are your clothes so red as if you have been treading out grapes? Verse three. I have been treading the wine press alone. No one was there to help me. In my anger, I trampled my enemies as if they were grapes. In my fury, I have trampled my foes. Their clothes have stained my, their blood, I'm sorry, has stained my clothes. For the time has come for me to avenge my people, to ransom them from their oppressors. I was amazed to see that no one intervened to help the oppressed. So I myself stepped in to save them with my strong arm and my wrath sustained me. I crushed the nations in my anger and made them stagger and fall to the ground, spilling their blood upon the earth. Ooh, woo. Mm, boy, he wasn't playing. Woo, he wasn't playing, boy. Boy, that's woo. Goodness, good, good. Like somebody said, good Google move. Boy, he wasn't playing. So what that mean? We see the blood on it. We see this robe and it's dripped in and it's dipped in and it's dripping blood. What is that? That's the blood of his enemies. See, this is why I, I keep telling y'all. Y'all think Jesus is going to be that. Oh, sweet and kind and, and sincere Christ that was here the first time. No, he ain't. He ain't going to be like that when he come back. When he come back, he coming back. 
he coming back mad, furious, everything. He is coming back. Oh, I, I can't use that word. Let's just say irritated. He's coming back irritated mad at how everything is and he say man my enemies i'm cr i'm gonna crush my enemies and what he said in isaiah i'm crushing them like they were grapes you can't stop what i'm doing i'm coming to put it into you once and for all and when he comes he's gonna be coming cutting slicing left and right tearing apart he's gonna have so much blood from the enemies that he's crushed that is, oh, that is, I keep, I, oh, I keep telling y'all, God is not nobody to be played with. Ooh, he ain't nobody to play with. Nobody to play with. Okay. Now let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Verse 14, the armies of heaven dressed in pure white linen followed him on white horses. The armies of heaven, how are they dressed? In pure white linen. What do we just see? The white linen was given to who? It was given to his bride, the church. So the armies of Christ could very well, this could be the church come back. Because we just seen Christ's bride is wearing white. They were given white linen. And here we are, this army has white linen and they are riding on white horses. OK, let's look at verse 15. From his mouth came a sharp sword and with it, he struck down the nations. He ruled them with an iron rod and he trod the wine press of the fierce wrath of almighty God. What's the sword in his mouth? The word of God. We already know that the sword of the mouth, the sword that's in his mouth is the word of God. He's using the word to fight against these enemies. And it says he ruled them, meaning he's going to win. You do know that, right? Like I said before, we are fighting a fixed fight. He's going to win this. There's no if there's no question about that. There's no question. But as we're going to see, these idiots, they still think that they can win. I don't know why, but they still do. But anyway, let's keep going. Okay, verse 16. On his robe and thigh were written this title, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You see that? He said King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Ain't nobody higher than Christ. Only one other person. That's God himself. But when it comes to the earth, but when it comes to this, ain't nobody, ain't no keys. the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. OK, let's keep going. Verse 17. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, shouting to the vultures, flying high above the sky. Come gather together for a great banquet. God has prepared. Come and eat the. Fl OK, let me stop right there. Let me read this again. Then verse 17. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, shouting to the vultures, flying high in the sky. Come. Gather together for, for the great banquet God has prepared. There's some vultures flying around and they're told gather together. So wait a minute. There's a there's another banquet. Yes, there is another banquet, but it's not the one you're thinking. This is another one. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 24. Let's go to Matthew 24. And we're going to scroll all the way down to verse 28. Listen to what it says. Just as the gathering of vultures shows there is a carcass nearby, so these signs shall indicate, these signs indicate the end is near. Verse 28. Just as the gathering of vultures show there's a carcass nearby. You see that? You see that? Now, what are we looking at in Revelation 19? There's an angel telling the vultures, hey, get together. It's about to be a banquet. So what does that mean? There's going to be some dead bodies around. That's what that means because of what we just read in Matthew 24, verse 28. Just as the gathering of vultures show there's a carcass nearby. And now the angel says the vultures, y'all get together. It's getting ready to be a, 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 a banquet. There's about to be a great feast. What is it? What's getting ready to happen? There's about to be some dead bodies around. Okay, let's keep reading. 
Verse 18, come and eat the flesh of kings, captains, and strong warriors of horses and their riders, and, and of all humanity, both free and slave, small and great. There's about to be some dead bodies. Verse 19, then I saw the beasts gathering the kings of the earth and their armies in order to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his armies. This is the bad. Remember, we talked about the battle of Armageddon. That's what this is. Verse 20, and the beast was captured and with him false with him, the false prophet who did mighty. With him, the false prophet. Who did mighty miracles on behalf of the beast, miracles that deceived all who had accepted the mark of the beast and who worshipped his statue. Both the beast and his false prophet were what? Thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. We see that the beast, the Antichrist and the false prophet are thrown where? Into the lake of fire. His, this is where he is punished for all eternity. This is the battle of Armageddon, and there's a bunch of dead bodies around. God, Jesus has defeated all of the beasts and the, and the uh, false prophets' armies. That's why those vultures are there, because they're getting ready, to eat just because they're about to eat off of the bones, just like the angel told them. Come and eat the flesh of the kings, captains, and strong warriors of horses and their riders. This battle of Armageddon is about to be a bunch of dead bodies around. That's why he told him about the vultures. And after he's defeated the armies, what happened? After he's defeated the armies, and the, what happened? The beast was captured, and with him the false prophet. And what happens? They are thrown into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. Verse 21, their entire army was killed by the sharp sword that came out of the mouth of the one riding the white horse. And the vultures of the sky gorged themselves. On what? The dead bodies. Oh, wow. You see that? Jesus has come back to the earth. And the, and the Antichrist and the false prophet have gotten their armies together. And Christ has his army. And guess what? Christ wins. The Antichrist and the false prophet are where? Thrown into the lake of fire. Tormented for all eternity. And all the bodies of everybody, of all their armies, now the vultures have come back to eat. That is just wow. Wow. Now, I, I, wanna, I want you guys, to, let's go back to Matthew 24. And let, let's read the rest of, um, let's read the rest of, I want to go to verse 29. Immediate verse 28, we're talking about the gathering of vultures. Show there's a carcass nearby. So shall it be to indicate the sign that the uh the end is near. Look at what it says. Immediately after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will give no light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Verse 30. And then at last, the sign that the Son of Man is coming will appear in the heavens and there will be deep mourning among all the peoples of the earth and they will see the son of man coming out of the clouds of heaven with power and and great glory did we not just see that happen jesus comes heaven opens up and guess what we see christ standing there and he comes we see that right and here it is talked about again. That's just amazing that Jesus told us exactly what's going to happen. See, this is where people will try to say, oh, that's the rapture. No, it's not the rapture. This is talking about his second coming in Matthew 24, verse 28 through 30. This talking about the second coming. This talking about the second coming. We're going to study Matthew 24. We're going to go more in depth into it at some point. But this is talking about his second coming. They'll try to say this is his rapture. No, this is his second coming, not the rapture. Notice what it says. The son of man will appear in the heavens. Didn't we just see that in his second coming? Didn't we just see that when heaven opened up? And there's deep mourning among all the peoples of the earth. Why? Because they know it's all because they know it's all over. 
and they'll see the son of man coming on the cloud of heaven with power and great glory. Now, I don't want I want to skip. I'm going to stop right there. At verse 30. I don't want to read 31. Like I said, we'll go more. We're going to do a real de- in-depth study on Rev on Matthew 24, because we're going to talk about Matt, uh, verse 31. We're going to talk about that because people use that verse 31 to say that's the that's the uh, that's the rapture. They'll, they'll use that as part of the rapture, but it's not. It's not. OK, now I want to do something. I want to do one other thing. We just read the rest of Matthew of uh, Revelation chapter 19. But I want you to do this. I want you to go to Matthew 22. Let's take a look at another. Let's go to Matthew 22 real quick. Matthew 22. Okay, here we go. Matthew 22. I'm going to get my other notebook right here. Okay. I want to look at something that Jesus talked about. Matthew 22. This is the parable of the great feast. Let's read it. Jesus told them several other stories to illustrate the kingdom. He said, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. Many guests were invited. And when the banquet was ready, he sent out his service to notify everyone that it was time to come. But they all refused. Verse four. So he sent other servants to tell them the feast has been prepared and choice meats have been cooked. Everything is ready. Hurry. Verse five. But the guests he had invited ignored them and went about their business. One to his farm, another to his store. Others seized his messengers and treated them shamefully, even killing some of them. Verse seven. Then the king became furious. He sent out his army to destroy the murderers and burn their city. And he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready and the guests I invited aren't worthy of the honor. Now go out to the street corners and invite everyone you see. Verse 10. So the servants brought in everyone they could find good and bad alike. And when the banquet hall was filled with and the banquet hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guest, he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding. You see where I'm going with this, right? Let's keep going. Friend, he asked, how is it that you are here without wedding clothes? And the man had no reply. Verse 13, then the king said to his aides, bind him hand and foot and throw him out into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Why am I going over this? Because Jesus gave this parable of the great wedding feast. Now, we just saw in Revelation 19, the feast between the between Jesus and the church. Now, oh, oh, man, let me see. Verse 20, man, did I pull that up in in Matthew? I didn't pull it up. Now. I want to I want you put you. Let me read this. Let me let me read this. You don't have to turn to it. Matthew 26, verse 29. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. You say that this is the Lord's Supper. This is the Lord's Supper in Matthew 26. And Jesus tells them the cup that I have, this cup that I have. I'm not going to drink this cup until we drink together again at the great wedding feast, which is what we just saw in Revelation 19, okay? Now, we're here here at Matthew 22, right? 
Now, why am I talking about this wedding feast? Because this is a parable that Jesus gave. I'm going to break this down for you to understand why this parable is so important. And it goes back to what I said. Pay attention to the parables of Jesus Christ, because the parables talk about how heaven works. That's why he spoke in riddles, because there were people who did. He did not want them to know the secrets of heaven. So he spoke in parables. But for us who are his children, we know his parables is an example of how heaven heaven operates at times. Pay attention to his parables because they have real meanings to them. Okay. Let's break this down. We're at Matthew 22, right? Verse two, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. Who's the king? God is the king. Who's his son? Jesus Christ. He has prepared a wedding for Jesus, right? We just saw that in Revelation 19, the great wedding feast, right? Now, many, so who's the bride? The church is the bride. Verse three, many guests were invited. And when the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to notify everyone that it was time to come. But they all refused. So he sent other servants to tell them the feast has been prepared and choice meats have been cooked. Everything is ready. Hurry. But the guests he had invited ignored them and went about their business. One to his farm, another to his store. <clears throat> another to his store. Others seized the. Now, I'm going to stop right there at that part for a minute. Others to their store. Now, so the king, God, the son, Jesus, has a wedding. The king is planning a wedding for Christ, for God. God is preparing a wedding for Jesus. The original people who he, who he originally sent the invite to, they did not want to come. Who's the original people? It's the Israelites. They were considered unbelievers because they did not believe who Jesus was. You need to understand something. Did I go? Do I have it pulled up? I don't think I have it pulled up. God, dog. You need to understand something. It's Matthew 15. Do I have it? Let me see. Go to Matthew 15. Let me pull this up real quick. Matthew 15. This is the story of, I, I think I got this right. Is this it? Yes, it is. Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. It's the story of the Canaanite woman. This woman came to, I'm paraphrasing, reading your study time. It's Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 on through 28. This woman comes to Christ. She's asking him, Lord, have mercy. My daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her. Jesus didn't give a reply. He gave her no word. And the disciples urged her to tell her, or was trying to tell her, get on away from here. Then Jesus tells this woman, I was only sent to help God's lost people, lost sheep, the children of Israel. But verse 25, but she came and worshiped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Verse 26, Jesus responded, it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. Jews call Gentiles dogs back in the day. So Jesus was in essence saying, I'm not going to, it's not good for me to take food from the children of Israel to give it the, the blessings that I have for them and give it to the dogs. But look at what verse 27 says. She replied, that's true, Lord. <clears throat> but even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Verse 28, dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. Did you see that? Jesus 
first time coming on the planet, when he first came, he only came for Israel the first time. But we know because of Mark, I don't think I pulled it up. I didn't pull it up. It's because, but we see, but we know now, Mark, man, I thought I wrote it down. Man, God, dog, I didn't write it down. It's in Mark where Jesus said, salvation now let me see let me check my notes real quick did i write it down no i didn't but it's in mark where he told him go and preach the good news to the gospel everybody who hears the good news will be saved so now that jesus has been died has died and has been resurrected now salvation is free for everybody why is that important let's go back to matthew 22 um, I want you to see that Jesus came the first time, right? He said he was only there for Israel the first time. But now that he has died and been resurrected, now salvation is free for everybody. OK. guys thanks for tuning in to this week's episode next week we'll continue our study of revelation chapter 19 the second coming of our lord and savior jesus christ and also remember do not forget pray the lord's prayer before you walk out that door and pray the armor of god prayer before you walk out that door amen so you'll be protected from the wiles of the enemy okay next week chapter 19 we'll continue in our study we're pushing on through love you guys see you next week 